Hi there. Today we're looking at reinforcement learning with unsupervised auxiliary tasks by Google. Um, <clears throat> so in this paper, the authors consider a reinforcement learning task and I can show you what it looks like. It looks like this kind of a maze or this is an example that they give uh, where you have to navigate the maze. It's 3D and you have to navigate from pixel inputs. You have to collect apples and reach the goal and this gives you rewards. So on the left you can see what the agent is actually seeing. On the right you can see it from a top-down view. Um, the problem is of course that the input is very or the reward is very sparse uh, meaning that you have to navigate a lot of maze before you even get a single point um, so reinforcement learning has a big trouble with this because it relies on constant reward to notice what actions are good and what actions are bad so what the authors propose is in addition to the regular loss um, that you would have so your reward uh, which is this thing you would also have an additional set of auxiliary tasks and here c goes over the auxil auxiliary control tasks that you specify each of those has a reward and you're also trying to maximize these each with a, with a, some kind of a weight here and the the thing is that the parameters that you maximize over control all of the different tasks so they are partly shared between the tasks so what you're hoping is that by kind of learning to do one thing you also learn to do another thing uh, so the difference between this and let's say um, you might have so we've seen kind of uh, work of the like this before where you do it in more like an autoencoder setting so for example you can the agent sees the input on the left here and it kind of tries to predict what the next input will be, what the next frame will be. The thought behind this is if it can accurately predict what the next frame will be, maybe it learns something useful about the environment. Um, in this work, it's different because now we couple a reward to these tasks. And I can show you here what the authors propose as additional rewards. Um, sorry, they're further on top. Let me go there especially they consider here these two um, auxiliary control tasks so pixel changes which means that um, the the agent actually tries to actively uh, change pixels so it gets a reward for changing the pixels in the input um, so it tries to maximize this it needs to learn what do I need to do to maximize my pixel changes and probably that will be moving around so it will learn to kind of move around, not move against the wall, because if it moves against the wall, the pixels, the pixels won't change. So it will kind of learn to move along the, the like a, how, a, how a regular human agent would also move, speak, not into a wall, not like into a dead end or something, such that the pixels always change. Um, of course, it's not perfect. You can also change your pixels quite a bit by simply spinning around in a circle. Um, but this is one auxiliary tasks that they augment the agent with. The other one is network features. So it's kind of a meta learning here. Um, you actually reward the agent for um, changing its own internal activations. Uh, so the hope is that it kind of learns about something about itself. How can I activate my internal um, neural network units? And it gets rewarded for that, so it might want to activate a lot of them and want to learn how they're activated. So this kind of self-introspection, you also hope that it kind of leads to a network that um, does more sophisticated tasks or, or that by nature of trying to get most pixel pixel changes and the most network feature activations that you also learn something useful for the actual task. Um, <clears throat> so these are the two tasks they propose. In addition, they also do, and they have a, a drawing of this over here, they also do a lot of other things, namely 
on the top left you can kind of see here, here you have a what's it called a beta base agent this is an a3c agent um, meaning that it's an it's an active critic so you learn a policy and you learn a value network we, we might go over this in a future video so just consider this a standard reinforcement learning agent um, you feed its experience into a replay buffer and out of the replay buffer you do many things so for one you try to um, learn these auxiliary tasks note that these are shared parameters um, between all of these networks that's why the auxiliary tasks actually help um, but you also try to better learn your value function they call this off uh, policy learning because you kind of um, pause the base agent training for a while and then you train the value function some more um, just because that helps you also try reward prediction from here and um, the way they do it as they explain is kind of in a skewed sampling way so out of all the situations you can be in the agent will have a reward very very few times so what they do is they simply sample out of the replay buffer out of all the experiences they've had so far they sample more frequently the experiences where they have actually gotten a reward that way that the hope is of course the agent if you if you look at maybe i can zoom in here if you look at the um the experience here where you actually get an apple then the agent might learn a lot faster oh if there's some kind of apple there and i move towards it to get a reward um so that's the the hope that you instantly recognize high reward situations and kind of are not so interested in non-reward situations of course it does introduce bias in your sampling and um, you might decide for yourself if that's good or bad here it seems to work so uh, they have a lot of experiments in this task and this labyrinth task and they um, of course as is with research they reach state of the art they're much better than anything else no, I mean, they don't boast this much, so it's actually um, fair comparisons. Uh, the criticisms, so they also uh, evaluate on Atari games. The criticisms that I have are twofold. First of all, um, the choice of auxiliary tasks is, of course, completely up to the um, implementer, which means that I have to decide as an implementer of this algorithm what my auxiliary task will be. And here, pixel changes and network features, they seem like fairly general tasks that you could apply to a lot of these kind of problems, but um, it always kind of comes down to how much knowledge about the task would you like to code into the, into the actor. And here, I mean, you can see it makes sense to get at least the, the pixel changes as an auxiliary task, but um, it's questionable how much of Kind of uh, domain knowledge this already encodes so the the fact the choice of these are um, certainly something that you have to decide as a human and i think these are these are good choices um so they're not too domain specific but also they do correspond to like some kind of visual moving around uh, game task and the other um kind of criticism it's not really criticism it's just a remark um, is that <coughs> they do a lot, a lot of things. So, I mean, their paper is about the auxiliary tasks, but they also then do these skewed sampling and the off policy value learning and so on. And of course, you can you can kind of argue, yeah, this is all done in um, in other reinforcement learning tasks. And that's why it's a, a fair comparison. Uh, I guess it's a philosophical question. If you want to reach state-of-the-art of course you have to first of all get a better better method here this would be the auxiliary tasks this is the new idea and then implement all the tricks that uh, the the other people have discovered um, which is good because you kind of reach the highest performance you can get but also the problem is you um, make it harder to compare you make it harder to see where the improvement is coming from have you simply chosen better hyperparameters 
for the reward predictions of thing have you simply is there an interaction maybe between the auxiliary tasks and the skewed sampling part uh, all of these kind of things wash out and it's not really clear where the improvement is coming from on the other hand if you simply take a basic 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 algorithm like just a3c here on the top left and you augment it with nothing but these auxiliary tasks on the bottom left then and then you see an improvement you can be relatively sure it's due to your new idea but of course you won't reach any state-of-the-art numbers because everyone that does a3c also does these tricks um philosophical question here i i'm standing more on the side of not doing the tricks or maybe doing both um yeah but decide for yourself and have a nice day